Hey guys, it's Heather Williams. I'm the worship director here at City Church of the Treasure Coast. And I'm gonna come in front of the camera this week because I've been behind the camera kind of helping to produce our seven on the sevens. But God has really laid something on my heart that I'd like to share with you guys today. But I'm gonna pray first. Father God, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you so much that even when we can't gather together physically, Father God, that we are one body, one spirit, one heart, Father God, unified through you, Jesus. We ask tonight that you would move in a mighty way. Speak, God, in these minutes and in these moments that we have together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I am going to share a little bit of a backstory of who I am and um, then kind of jump in. And I'm Irish and I've kissed the Blarney Stone, so I'll try to keep it down, but we'll see what happens. God, God sometimes makes me a chatterbox. But um, I have a lot of Bibles in my house, but this one here is my favorite. Um, this one was given to me by my aunt and uncle, who are now my mom and dad, because they adopted me when I turned, um, I was about to turn 18. I was 17 at the time, Christmas Day, 1993. And they gave this to me, even though I was completely not a Christian, hated God, didn't want anything to do with anything to do with God. But they gave me this Bible um, and they told me that they were praying for me, for God to get a hold of my life, for him to chase after me, to, to redeem me. I'm paraphrasing here, but that was their hope. And I'm telling you right now, God is faithful because I'm standing here right now, sitting here right now. God has gotten a hold of my life, y'all, and he pursues me to this day. But I love reading out of this Bible. Um, I had an opportunity to go to Israel about 13 years ago, and um, everywhere that I went in Israel, I did this really gross thing where I like spit in the dirt, and then I would go and take the dirt of wherever we were, and I would smear it on the scriptures in this Bible. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but right here, there's like a little smudge of dirt right where it says the garden tomb with the resurrection. And I was right there, right where Jesus conquered death. Yeah, kicked it out of there. Say, I've, I've beaten death. I was right there and I saw it with my eyes. And I want to read actually from Matthew chapter 28 today. And I'm going to read that and then we're going to jump over to uh, John. But Matthew chapter 28, after the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Get this. I love this. Verse six. He is not here. He has risen just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Whew, I could do a whole sermon on that. Suddenly Jesus met them. <laughs> Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, where they will see me. Now right there, two women, first missionaries, come on and preach the gospel, right? That's pretty amazing. But he tells them to go, and now I want to go over to John, the book of John, and we're going to look in chapter 20, and we're going to see what the disciples were doing um, when they were waiting for Jesus in Galilee, because they're told he's risen, just like, like he said. I also want to put a little bit of a footnote here. These guys, the disciples, they walked with Jesus. They saw the miracles. They saw him feed the 5,000. They saw him walk on water. They saw him raise Lazarus from the dead. These are the same disciples who saw that, and this is where they are when they're going to have Jesus meet them in Galilee. So we ha we are in uh, John chapter 20, and we're going to start in verse 19. On the evening, on the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, right here, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said, Peace be with you. He says it again to them. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Now I want you to get this. This is what just 
totally rocked my world. Whoo, all right. Verse 22, and with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now church, again, these guys, they saw all the miracles that Jesus did. They knew, you, you see it, and they were like, surely you are the Son of God. They knew that. They walked alongside of him. They knew that he had been arrested. They watched him get arrested. They watched him be crucified. They knew that people were going to come for them next because they were afraid. They were afraid of the leaders that were going to come for them. So even after the women told them, go to Galilee, we saw Jesus. He's not dead. He's alive. Go to Galilee. And they go and they go in a, in a room and they lock the doors and they're scared. And then Jesus comes and says, peace, gives them peace and breathes on them. The Holy Spirit Church, I want us to get this. Right now we're walking through a time where fear can run rampant. It's, it's, it has with me. I've been fearful of things, but I've had to remind myself over and over and over again that it does not dictate who I am. Jesus has given me peace. He's come to me and he has said, peace, peace be with you. And I've seen him do miracles in my life. And I know you have too. There's things in your life that you've seen him do. And I'm here to tell you that God does not want us as a church to be hiding at locked doors. This is an opportunity to share with the world what Jesus has done and who he is and the hope and the joy and the peace that he has. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Jesus is breathing on us right now. And the Holy Spirit is just wanting to move. There are people in Spain, in Brazil, all over social media that is normally all about, oh, me, 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 and I'm mad at this, and I hate this political person, and I'm right about this, and oh, here's my selfie, guilty, guilty, guilty. Right, that's what it's normally filled with. Right now, it is filled with these places like Brazil and like Spain, and people are pouring into the streets, and they are on their knees repenting and worshiping God. And I'm going to tell you, if that doesn't stir you in your soul, saying the Holy Spirit is, is working and moving, there is revival taking place. And church, we're a part of that. Now think about this. If this had all happened with this virus 20, 25 years ago, before we had the internet, before we had phones in our hands that could take us to the moon with the technology that we have, what would we have done now? In this time, we are given that gift of technology to be able to go out and share the gospel. And I'm going to tell you this, don't be afraid to share what God has done in your life because there are people that are watching. I want to challenge you right now. Go out in your driveway. You can social distance this. Go out in your driveway at a certain time every night and just worship God. Turn on some worship music and just worship God and then watch the Holy Spirit move because I'm telling you right now, there is a revival that is taking place. And I'm gonna dive into a little bit more the next time that I'm with you guys, but I wanna leave you with that. Jesus breathed on us. Oh, Father, breathe on us, Father God. Holy Spirit, have your way in us as a church. I'm gonna pray tonight. Father God, we thank you for who you are. God, you are on your throne. You have not left your throne. You are still in control, Father. You are still the author and the perfecter of our faith. Father God, I pray that we would fix our eyes on you because just as you have said, you will not leave us, you will not forsake us. Father, I ask tonight for those who are struggling in times of having fear or feeling tired, Father God, or maybe even physically going against this virus that, that is hurting them personally or someone that they know. Father God, I pray that you would come and reign in peace, Father God, in strength, in joy. Father God, I pray in all circumstances that we would turn to you, Father. And we wouldn't turn to, to the author of lies who wants to fill us with fear and fill us with things that are just going to turn our eyes away from you, Father. Fix our eyes. Fix our eyes, Father God. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in our families, in this church, in this church community, Father God. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I've loved being with you guys tonight. I'm going to ask something of you. If you would go to citychurchtreasurecoast.com, 
click on the donate here or give online and just give a gift, five, 10, $20, whatever you can give. It is gonna help us because right now we have people who are still coming to the church and we wanna feed them, physically feed them. We're still having church on Sunday, even without people here. And we do need those funds to still come in. So if you would go and prayerfully consider giving a gift, that would be so much appreciated. We love you guys. We can't wait to get back together with you guys. We are going to have such a party. But right now, let's have a party in our homes because Easter is still two weeks away, whether we are in a building or not together. And we're going to celebrate that Jesus is alive and he is moving. Amen. Amen.